Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be doing an overview of Mantra VR version 2.0. Mantra 2.0 introduces easy to use AR content creation features as well as Metal's 3DNA 3D engine that enables advanced volumetric workflows. Mantra 2.0 allows Adobe customers to step right into AR using the tools they already know, After Effects and Premiere Pro. In this overview, we're going to look at the updated Mantra graphics effect, which allows us to extrude 2D graphics into 3D shapes, logos, and text. Then we'll look at the new Mantra OBJX effect, which allows us to import popular 3D formats like OBJ and FBX, modify them, and then export them to AR-supported formats. Finally, we'll look at the new Mantra Spherify effect, which allows us to create 3D spheres with stills or footage, and then export those as portals for use in AR. Alright guys, let's get started and jump into After Effects. Now that we're inside of After Effects, before we get started, I do want to mention again that all of the Mantra effects work on monoscopic, stereoscopic, and rectilinear flat video. So you can use these effects on quite a few different varieties of footage. I've got some rectilinear flat video here, this aerial shot. And let's go ahead and get started with the Mantra graphics effects. I'm going to select my footage, come here to Effect, come down here to Metal, and I'm going to select the Mantra graphics effect. And let's start by looking at some of the new features, and I want to create a 3D logo here for a logo that I've got. So let me go back here to the project files here. I'm going to drag in this generic coffee icon. You can see it's just a PNG image with an alpha channel. And so I'm just going to drag this into my composition. And again, now we can see it there. I'm actually going to place it below my footage, just so we don't see that. But I'm going to select my footage, come back up to the effects controls. And the first thing we have here is the frame layout. So I want to change this to be rectilinear since we're working with flat video here. And for the projected layer, I'm going to go ahead and select that coffee icon. So now we can see that on our footage. And right now it's just flat 2D. And we can come out here to the extrusion and the model transformation options. Let's go ahead and just rotate this on the Y axis a little bit just so we can see that it is flat. And we can see that there. And now let's go over to extrusion and let's go ahead and increase the extrusion depth. And now you can see we've already created a 3D logo from a flat, just PNG image that we had. So that's how quick and easy we can do that now immediately in After Effects. I really like the versatility that this provides because again, in some rare cases, you may only have a PNG image or a JPEG image, let's say, of a logo. And we can now extrude that to create a 3D logo from that and not have to round trip into other programs or worry about having a vector file. Now, if we look here at the side, we're getting a little bit of artifacting here around the edges. And we can adjust that with this contour threshold. So I can increase that and you'll see that kind of just whites that out. And so it's nice to give us that option. We can rotate this around and look at it. And we also have an option to add some bevels if you want to. You can see I can add some bevels here. I'm actually going to lower that threshold so we can kind of see where that bevel is occurring. So you can see we create a bevel here. And you can kind of adjust the size of that if you would like. I'm actually going to leave the bevel off of this. We also have the bevel curvature options. I'm going to increase that threshold back to 100. Now let's come down here and look at some of the lighting and material options we have. So we can actually add in a point light. And you can see now we're getting some shading on our logo and we can adjust kind of the angle of that light and do some stuff with that. And again, we have the material options here as well. So we can kind of adjust the roughness. You can kind of see how that affects the shadowing there. Or we can make it metal, make it a little more reflective, that kind of thing. Adjust the specular. But what I really like is the environment options here. Let me toggle this down. And you're gonna see we have this option for enabling image-based lighting. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna look at our footage, it's gonna add in kind of the colors and reflections from our footage onto our logo. Essentially integrating it into our scene much faster and a lot easier. So let me go ahead and turn this on. And when I do that, you're gonna see it's kind of a little bit overblown now. I'm gonna bring the light intensity here. I'm actually gonna turn that off just for the time being so we can kind of see what's happening. So let me go ahead and turn this on and off. So this is with it off. And now with it on, you're kind of seeing we're getting a little bit of green and blue reflections here on our logo. It's a bit dark, but that's where we can add this point light back in and we can adjust this intensity. So this just allows us to kind of integrate that logo, you can see. And just giving us a better overall look on our logo. Let me again go ahead and check this on and off so you can see that. In a way, it kind of creates a much more natural ambient light on everything when our logo is projected in 3D. And you can adjust other settings like the intensity of it here. We can actually bring this over 100 so you can see you can really overpower that if we want to. And just to kind of brighten things up. And you can see how that looks matching with our scene. And of course, we can move this around. Let's say if we were wanting to kind of pinpoint where our coffee shop was in the scene, we can use the point of interest here. Kind of move that up and over something. And then we can also work with the rotation controls here to kind of just get that to match with that so it looks nice. 
And that's how quick and easy it is, again, to go from a flat 2D image to now a fully integrated 3D logo that is being lit based on our actual footage. But Mantra has another trick up its sleeve here. Let's say we wanted to now export that logo to actually be a 3D logo we can use in AR. And we actually have that capability built in. So if we come down here, you're gonna see we have two export options here, export to USDZ and export to GLTF. And all we need to do if we wanna export this to one of those formats is just click that button. So I'm gonna click the export USDZ. And immediately that'll launch the file explorer. So we can go ahead and name our file. So I'm just gonna call this coffee logo. And just go ahead and click save. And that's how quick and easy it is for us to export that logo that we can now import into AR. And then we can use that logo in an app like Adobe Aero, as you can see here. And again, all of this started from a flat image. So this really opens up the door of possibility when it comes to creating actual AR content for your clients and just makes a really easy and streamlined workflow. One thing to keep in mind is when you actually export out the logo, it's just gonna export out kind of the 3D geometry and the texture, it won't actually export out the lighting. That's actually just inside of After Effects where we're creating that. The lighting will be dependent on whatever AR application you're working with and how you adjust that in that app settings. Finally, I do wanna mention we have some updated distribution controls as well here if you wanna take advantage of those. As you can see, we have the same ones as before with a few more options and you can always do some cool abstract things with these. We can increase the instances here so you can have a lot of versatility with that. And again, change up the distribution types, such as grid. And you can see we have these grid options down here where we can then adjust kind of X, Y, and Z with that. And now you can kind of see how those grid controls work here with that, how it's duplicating the logo. One other thing I do want to show you quickly here with the Mantra Graphics Effect is that the image-based lighting also works, again, with monoscopic footage. So you can see I've got a 360 clip here of the city. And let's say I was wanting to track in this coffee shop logo into this footage. I've already made it 3D and you can see it's just being lit with the actual light here in the effect. But I'm gonna go ahead and enable the image-based lighting and that will use this entire 360 to light our logo here in this scenario. But again, I just wanted to showcase how that image-based lighting also works in 360 with monoscopic and stereoscopic footage. All right, now let's take a look at the Mantra OBJ X effect. And I'm actually gonna apply this to some flat footage again here. You can see I've got this footage of this warp tunnel it's got some cool lights and colors moving through it. And we're gonna see how this reacts to our model that we actually import into After Effects. It's gonna do some really cool stuff. So with my footage selected, I'm gonna come here to Effect, come down here to Metal, and then we're gonna select the OBJ X effect. And from the default, we'll see we have this OBJ of the Metal logo in our scene. We can already see it's kind of being lit by our footage. But I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna change the frame layout to be flat. And we can just take a quick look at the default logo in here. So I'm gonna come in here to Model Transformation. And we can move it around on the position axis here. I'll move it on the Z axis, move it closer to the camera. And you can actually see how that's actually reflecting everything we're seeing. If I go ahead and just kind of ramp preview this footage, we can see how that's reflecting really beautifully off of the metal logo there. And again, we have the same lighting and material options that we just saw in the graphics effect. So with the material, I can actually override the default material that we might have. And we can add some roughness in here. You can see how it's kind of making that a little bit less chrome there. And we can adjust the metal if we want to kind of give it more of a ceramic-like look with that. And of course, we can keyframe these position and rotational values. So you can really create kind of a cool logo intro or whatever OBJ you're working with. Again, really quickly using the OBJ X effect. And again, we're getting that really nice image-based lighting and real-time reflections off whatever footage that we're working with. So it integrates quite nicely into our shot. Let's go ahead and reset this effect. I'm gonna change this again back to rectilinear and let's actually import in our own model now and take a look at kind of what we can do with that. So I'm gonna go up here to select model and that's gonna launch the file explorer and I'm just gonna select this simple teapot OBJ and go ahead and click open. And now we can see that's loaded that teapot OBJ into After Effects. Now one thing to note with OBJs or other 3D formats is a lot of times there's no standard measurement when it comes to scale or positional data so sometimes your model may not actually import directly into the center of your scene. As we can see here with the teapot, it's kind of located a little bit up. Luckily, we have these anchor controls built right into OBJX. So let's go ahead and just recenter up this teapot before we do any rotation or positional changes. That'll just make it a lot easier for us later. So with the X axis here, I'm just gonna adjust this, move it over to the center, and let's go ahead and move it down on the Y axis here. Just to kind of center that up. And it can be a little difficult sometimes to judge if you're off possibly on the Z axis. But let me show you what I like to do. I like to come here to the rotate Y. And I'm gonna set this to be 90 degrees. 
And when I do that, we can see when we rotate this 90 degrees, it again is still a little bit off center. So again, we can just take the Z anchor point here and we'll just move this over so that's centered up. And now our model has been repositioned back into kind of the center of our After Effects space here. And again, we have the different lighting controls. We can turn that on or off. I'm gonna turn that off and just have this be completely lit by our image-based lighting that's on by default with OBJX. So if we come in here to the environment, we will see we have that currently on. And again, we can adjust that intensity and things like that a little bit later if we want to. Let's go over to material. And there wasn't really a material, just kind of the default gray on this teapot. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And now you're gonna see we get these nice chrome reflections. You can actually see the object itself here is actually being reflected in itself. So that looks really nice. We can kind of see how this looks. Really detailed reflections we're getting on that. And again, we can always adjust the roughness and the spectrum and those type of things if we want to go ahead and change this up. But I'm actually going to cover to the color and I'm actually going to make this a different color. Let's make this blue. And let's go ahead and take down the metal. Just kind of make this more of like a blue teapot. And so we're getting some slight reflections here, but you can see how we've actually integrated that into our shot. And again, what's nice about this is not only do we have the option of importing in these OBJs and other 3D formats with OBJX, we have the option to export them out for AR. We have the same export to USDZ and export to GLTF right here. And if I go ahead and export this as it is right now, it actually will retain that material. Now it won't retain the reflection properties, but it will retain the color and some other changes like that that I do to the model. So again, it's just as simple as coming over here and clicking on export. That'll launch the file explorer and we can name our AR export. And then just come over here and click save. And that's how easy that is to export out into an AR format that again, we can import into an AR app or any other AR supported applications. Really quickly, I wanna show you another composition here where I'm using the OBJX effect and I've imported in a really detailed skull model. So this is a really high poly model we have right here. And we're getting these really nice reflections on the model with this footage. And again, it's being lit with that image-based lighting. And again, if we wanted to, we could apply custom colors to this as well. So I wanna make this kind of a red skull. Click OK. And then again, I could always export this out to one of those AR-supported formats that quickly and easily. All right, so now let's take a look at the Mantra Spherify effect, which is gonna allow us to create some really cool 3D spheres in After Effects. And again, we can export those kind of as portals into AR. And what's nice is we can add different textures to the outside and the inside of the portal. So let's go ahead and start out with this monoscopic footage here. I've got this kind of forest scene. So I'm gonna select my footage, or my image in this case, come here to effect. We're gonna come down here to metal. And we're gonna select the Mantra Spherify effect. Now with the Mantra Spherify effect, again, we can work with monoscopic, stereoscopic, or rectilinear footage. I'm gonna leave it on monoscopic because that's actually what this composition is, but we're also working with that as our projected layer. So you're gonna see we have a wrap layer and a backside layer. So to start out, I'm gonna select the wrap layer and I'm gonna select my actual forest image here. So when I do that, we're gonna see we kind of get this monoscopic 360 projection of our footage. And what I wanna do is with the progress here, you can see I can increase this. And it's going to kind of create that sphere. So we get that 3D sphere with our footage here and I can go the other direction. You can kind of see how this looks with that, how it's kind of closing up. If we can come down here and adjust this just like we did with the OBJX and the graphics effect. We can increase the scale of this if we want to. And we have lighting options here. We can toggle on or off. We wanna to adjust the lighting. If we wanna actually keep this in our kind of 360 or rectilinear space. Again, we have material options, environment options. Just as we did before, we can even image-based light this from the original footage so you can kind of see it gives it this golden hue. I'm actually gonna come up here and lower the progress. So it's a little bit open here like this. You can see how it's actually being lit by the original footage here when I check this on and off. You can see how that works. What I'm actually gonna do here is I'm actually gonna turn off the lighting and the image-based lighting. So we're just kind of getting this flat, evenly lit sphere. But what I wanna do is I wanna create this portal. So what I've got here, I've got this other wireframe texture. I'm just gonna drag and drop this into the composition. You can see this is gonna be kind of a cool wireframe sphere. And I want this to be on the outside of the sphere so that when we actually pass through it, we kind of get immersed into that forest scene, but we didn't know kind of what we were gonna see until we actually went through the sphere. So I'm gonna move this below my original clip. I'm actually gonna turn off the visibility of it, but I'm gonna select this forest clip again, and we're gonna select the backside layer to be that wireframe. And now we can actually see that showing up there. So let's go ahead and increase the progress here all the way to negative 100, so that closes up. So now we can see that on the outside of our sphere. And the idea here is 
what I want to do is I want to export this out to be used in AR. And then we can actually pass through the sphere in AR to kind of be immersed into that scene. So it's kind of a cool way for us to create this custom portal. So let me come down here and we have those export to AR options, the USDZ and the GLTF. And I'm going to export this out as a USDZ. So I'm just going to name this as our portal and go ahead and click save. And that's going to automatically export out that sphere, which will retain the textures on the interior and the exterior of the model. And you can see here, I'm actually using the portal in Reality Composer. I'm actually able to walk up to it and actually pass through it and look inside of it. So you can see how quick and easy this is to do, even inside of something like After Effects, not having to use any other 3D programs to kind of create some nice AR content. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial overview of Mantra 2.0 and all the new features. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the AR content everyone creates. Thanks for watching.